All right, let's welcome back to Midpoint now the research director of the European Leadership Network, Lukash Kuleza, and also welcome defense columnist, analyst for the Russian newspaper, The New Gazette, Pavel Felgenhauer. Lukash, we've got our audio reconnected here. Let me move forward here and just ask you this. Everything we've talked about, I understand that you don't believe that we're in, we are in a Cold War here, but let's bring this down to a possible end result. Do you believe that Vladimir Putin, the military, the people behind him, are at this point so ready to undertake this, this fight, if you will, with the West again, that they would be ready to go nuclear or to go to war? Uh, well, let me start by saying that it's slightly worrying that uh, there is a better connection with Moscow than in London. Uh, it says it might say something about the transatlantic uh, link, uh, <laughs> but uh, more seriously, uh, and to your question, uh, right now there is uh, a massive upsurge of the Russian propaganda uh, connected uh, with uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, President Putin was kind enough to remind us at least twice that uh, Russia is a nuclear power and uh, it should be treated seriously. Uh, you got some people uh, in the media, uh, some experts connected, so-called experts connected uh, with uh, various military-related portals uh, saying how strong uh, Russia is and what it can do with its uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, I believe it's, it's still mainly uh, posturing that uh, the Russian uh, leadership understands uh, the costs uh, of a, a nuclear uh, war or a nuclear con uh, conflict with uh, the, the United States. Uh, but you might still uh, seem, see some slight changes. You might see uh, a change of the Russian uh, military uh, doctrine uh, with slightly more importance for nuclear weapons. Uh, you got, of course, continuation of the modernization uh, programs involving the Russian uh, strategic forces. Uh, you might see some uh, units uh, with nuclear capable uh, weapons being moved uh, towards uh, the, the West, uh, but uh, there is plenty of propaganda, uh, there is a lot of huffing and puffing, uh, but uh, they are, we are not there yet. Pavel, if you will, cut through some of the huffing and puffing here from Russia right now. Is this, in your opinion, posturing, or are indeed the Russian military leaders simply ready to go to war because they see that as inevitable? Uh, well, the mutual assured destruction is still there. But during the Cold War, it was a very well-known tactic and used by both sides very effectively. It's a sort of it's called in Russian balancing on the uh, brink of nuclear war. In English, it's uh, brinkmanship, a phrase coined by John Foster Dallas, which means basically a, a nuclear blackmail. And that's what uh, the only actual effective way that Russia can use its nuclear weapons into which we have sunk enormous amounts of money and using them actually as weapons would mean the end of everything. Uh, but using them for blackmail works and had worked during the Cold War, it will work most likely again. So now we're demonstrating our capabilities, demonstrating our uh, strategic uh, bombers flying around Europe telling the Europeans that if they continue to back the United States, they can get into trouble, maybe even nuclear trouble. But if they move uh, away from America and go for, for some kind of Finlandization of Europe, then there's going to be, everything is going to be nice. They'll earn a lot of money uh, trading in Russian resources, and uh, they can live their own lives as long as they are, move away from the United States. So this is nuclear blackmail. And it's worked before, it worked again, and it's, it's right now in full swing. Okay, I've only got about a minute left. I need 30 seconds from both of you, please. Pavel, I'll stay with you. How should the President of the United States, whether it's Barack Obama or anybody else, right now deal with Vladimir Putin to get this thing back on a peaceful slide? Well, there's no possibility right now of a long-term political solution, but it's possible to have a ceasefire. So better be have a kind of Gaza-type ceasefire than continued fighting in Ukraine. Ceasefire even before the guns start firing, correct? Well, they're still firing all the time right now there. There's no frozen conflict. It's a continuing uh, war of attrition, which has the possibility to escalate. All right, Lukash, to you then. President, be it Obama or what, can they do anything now to get to Putin and slow this down? In Ukraine, ceasefire, yes. Uh, but uh, more globally, when it comes to nuclear uh, things, uh, the U.S. president can show that the two can play this game. 
that the United States is also a nuclear weapon state, uh, that it has a security relationship uh, with Europe that also includes a, a nuclear umbrella uh, over the NATO uh, allies. Uh, so uh, I think there's uh, plenty of things uh, that the US president can do also to, to bolster deterrence and assuring uh, the people in Europe who are afraid about the situation. Unfortunately, it looks like we are right back at MAD, mutually assured destruction, and maybe it never went away. Lukash Kuleza, Pavel Felgenhauer, gentlemen, thank you so much for your comments. I will look forward to speaking to you again. Our Thank pleasure. you. All right. We're back after a break here on Midpoint. As we spin to that part of the world, we see danger in at almost every corner. Iran and their nuclear possibilities.